Hello, this is Bryce Morrison from thegameprodigy.com. Let me ask you something. When you release a game, how can you be absolutely sure that people will love it? How can you know for a fact that when people play your game, they're going to have a great time? How can you know that they aren't going to run into any design hangups or programming bugs and get frustrated? Is such fortune telling possible? It is. And it isn't magic, it's playtesting. In this video, we're going to talk about what playtesting is, how to do it like the pros, and how to use playtesting to greatly multiply the quality of your game. Playtesting is probably one of the most important parts of game design, yet it's often one of the most ignored not only by indie developers, but also by many big game companies. Let's start with the basics. What is playtesting? Playtesting is where you get actual players to try out your game and receive feedback from them. You can then use this feedback to improve your game, banking on the fact that many other players will probably try to do the same things. Play behaviors like sand. Sand blowing in the wind is kind of crazy. It's difficult to control and you don't know exactly where it's going to go. But there are some general rules, but basically it seems like it goes where it wants. Game design is like a funnel for the sand. A good game design will take the sand exactly where you want it to go. A little might fall over the edges, but the vast majority will end up in the right bucket. This means that, despite the differences in people's exact behavior, you can use playtesting and game design to funnel player behavior how you like. Since people's actions are 95% governed by their environment, you can shape their environment, your game, to encourage the behavior you want. A good design can make players do incredibly complicated and advanced activities without even thinking about it, but a bad design will make players fail at even the simplest of tasks. Now that you're convinced of the value of playtesting, how do you actually set one up? First, you need to find playtesters. When picking out people to playtest your game, you'll want to select people in your target market. If you can't find people exactly in your target market, it's still beneficial to get who you can. Just having someone, anyone, besides you play the game will provide valuable feedback. Get your friends or family to try it out. How much playtesting you do depends on you. Some large companies test all the way through, while others only playtest when the game is almost done. It's up to you, just view it as a tool that you can use. The example game that I'll be playtesting in this video is an action side-scroller. The player plays as this knight character, and you can shoot energy to destroy ghosts. The goal is for the player to move to the right as much as possible. Before you start, you'll want to have a few supplies. A playtest is made up of two components, observations and questions. To make observations, you need a notepad. Don't expect to be able to remember everything you'll learn in a playtest. There will be so many little unique things that you don't want to forget. You'll want to be able to take notes as to what's happening so you can action on it later. You'll also want a ready list of questions you want to ask. What are the things you're trying to learn? Is there part of a game you aren't sure about? Be sure you're ready with these so you don't forget. Okay, so you have your playtester all set up with the game and they're playing. Now it's all about observation. You want to watch what the player does and see if it matches what you imagine players would do. If it doesn't, then write it down. Playtesting helps you weed out these strange behaviors early so that you can fix them. For example, when you shoot these chests five times, they reveal a power-up. However, none of my playtesters were doing this. They didn't figure it out. I decided that it was probably because they weren't getting any feedback that the chests were different from the rest of the level. To remedy that, I made the chests blink when they got hit. Then everyone found the power-ups. Playtesting also helps you find bugs. One bug was that if you run to the left instead of the right, then the player falls off onto oblivion. I didn't notice this until playtesters did it. That's something to fix. When you're running a playtest, don't talk at all unless absolutely necessary. This is key. You can't help them. If they keep running off a cliff when they're supposed to jump, don't tell them that they're supposed to jump. Do not talk. Observe. If your game is terrible, then this will be a good wake-up call. When observing, you're always trying to figure out, why are they doing what they're doing? Most people are rational human beings, just like yourself. So during a playtest, it's important to remember that if your player is doing something seemingly stupid, it's not them that's stupid, it's the game. The game is somehow encouraging them to do that stupid behavior. Rather than just label the player as incompetent, try and figure out what in the environment is causing them to do whatever it is they're doing. Look at the world they're in, think about what they've learned. They aren't as intimately familiar with the game as you are, so they're just trying to figure out what it's all about. Now the don't talk rule only goes to a certain point. If the player is stuck on something, and it seems like they're never going to figure it out, then you can speak. Don't jump the gun too early, give them some time, but if you decide that they're going to get so frustrated that they won't want to continue at all, then you can speak up. You always want to keep the player talking out loud if possible. When a player gets frustrated, 
is doing the same wrong thing over and over again, or seems to be lost, you can ask them, what are you thinking right now? Or, what are you trying to do? Another good set of questions that I like to ask is to test their understanding of the game. I often point at something and say, do you know what this is? And then I let them explain it. For example, when I asked playtesters what the red box in the top left corner meant, not everyone could tell me. It was supposed to be a representation of the player's life. This was obvious to some players, but not to others. So to fix it, I changed it to look like a heart. When we playtested again, everyone was able to say what the heart represented. I absolutely believe that extensive playtesting is the easiest way to make fantastic games. It's a surefire method to find the objective truth in a design and then chisel your game so that it allows everyone you want to experience it. Afraid that some part is too complicated? Playtest it. Afraid that some part is too easy or boring? Playtest it. Wondering about a new idea? Playtest it. Whatever your questions are, you can learn more by having real players give you feedback. For more videos and resources for intelligent game and career development, visit us at thegameprodigy.com. Thanks for watching.